Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve a brand new leak code problem just from the leak code contest that just ended a second ago. 1849 splitting a string into descending consecutive values. So this is a pretty standard backtracking problem. So we're going to be handling this recursively with backtracking. And by that, I basically mean this is a brute force approach because we're going to be handling basically every single possible case. So it's pretty straightforward of an explanation. We are given a string S. It only contains digits, right? So zero, nine, one, whatever. It contains digits. We want to split the string into at least two integers. So we do have to split it at least once. We could split once, twice, whatever, however many times. So, and we want to split it such that every single integer is in descending order and not only descending order, but descending by exactly one value. So for example, if we split this string such that it looks like this, two different integers, right? What does this value evaluate to? Well, it has a couple leading zeros, but we don't care about leading zeros. So this evaluates to 90. This has a single leading zero. And again, we don't care about that. So this evaluates to 89. So let me ask you, are these two values in descending order? Yes, they're in descending order. Are they descending by exactly one? Yes, they're descending by one, right? So in this case, there does exist a valid way to split them so we can return true, right? We would return true in this case. What about this string? Can we split this in any way that it will be in descending order? Not really because look, it only has leading zeros. So no matter how we split it, there's gonna be a one at the end and that one is gonna be greater than whatever comes before it. So it's gonna be in ascending order, right? It's gonna be increasing, not decreasing. Therefore, we cannot uh, have it in descending order by exactly one. So we can return false in this case. So let me ask you, is there like a really neat pattern that we can solve this problem super efficiently like law or linear time? Definitely not. We are gonna basically handle this in the brute force approach. So notice how there's no restriction on what the first integer is, is, right? So we can brute force that. What we can do is we can try just the first digit by itself as our first value, or we can try the first two digits by themselves as our first value, or the first three digits as the first value, and so on and so on, right? There's never a restriction on the first value, but every Every value that comes after the first value has to be exactly minus one, right? So if we had five as our first value, the next value has to be four and then three and so on and so on. So let's visualize this a little bit. How would the decision tree or our backtracking tree look like? Take a look at the left-hand side that I'm doing. So the first case or one path of our decision tree would just be one digit, right? Just the first digit. And the next path could be two digits, right? And the next path could be three digits and so on and so on, right? We, we'd have four and then all the way to N. So let's redraw that. So one, two, right, three, all the way to n digits, right? So, and then this is gonna be continuation of that, right? We're just gonna continue. So let's say we got the first one digit, then we'd want the next digits uh, continuing, right? The next one digit, the next two digits, so on and so on until we don't have any digits left inside of our entire string. So based on this idea, this decision tree, right? You can see that we're gonna have n branches right in the worst case we have n branches and then and the height of the tree is also going to be roughly n so you might think okay the big o time complexity is going to be proportional to n to the power of n but realistically it's going to be more efficient than this because we are going to be doing some kind of pruning right when if we let's say for example our first uh, digit was 90 then as we continue to brute force other digits right let's say we we got a 75 or a 80 and you know 60 or whatever none of these digits are exactly one less than 90 so we wouldn't continue on the depth for search path for these uh for any of these uh decisions 
So in our decision tree, so we're gonna cut them short. You'll see exactly how we're gonna do that in the code. So just a little visual example of this, let's say this was our input string. What would kind of our decision tree, our backtracking decision tree look like? Well, remember, I'm gonna say, okay, well, one decision would be just the first uh, value, the first digit. One decision would be the first two digits. Uh, one decision would be the first three and another decision would be all four as our first value. So you can say that these are going to be our decisions Four, forty-three, four, three, two, and four, three, two, one. And then we're really just going to continue on. So let's say, remember the first digit. So meaning this first kind of row has no restrictions. This value could be anything. Any of these values could be anything. But now when we go, so for example, from this four, we have three decisions, right? Our first value. So we can't consider this four anymore, but our first value could be three. Another choice could be 32. Another choice could be three, two, one. So these are our three choices, right? But remember now these values actually have one restriction. They have to be exactly one less than this value. Are any of them exactly one less? 32 is not one less. They have These values have to be in descending order by exactly one. So this simply will not work. This also simply will not work, right? It's not one less. Hey, but a good thing here is we have a three. Three, exa three is exactly one less than four. And, you know, kind of by looking at this, you can tell that the correct order is going to be four, three, two, one. So that's kind of, you know, this is kind of just a quick rundown of what the uh, result is going to be. And we can verify that this, you know, this decision this path along our decision tree is the result because it's in descending order by exactly one. So that's going to end up being the solution. We're going to end up returning true because we did find a valid way. These other three paths will not end up working. I'll just tell you that right now, but you can probably tell by looking at this that there's not going to be a valid solution. But this is just kind of a visualization of the decision tree and what we're actually trying to do. We're brute forcing this. We're checking every possible path. If any of them, if any of them work out, we're going to return true. Okay, so remember we're going to handle this recursively, but the first thing I'm going to do is get is determine the first integer uh, that we're going to get from our string. So I'm going to brute force this, right? We're going to potentially try the first digit, the first two digits, the first three digits, and so on and so on. So let's run through, let's run I through the entire uh, string, except we, we can't go to the up until the last character because we know we need at least two, we need to split the string into at least two separate numbers. So once I have my index I, I'm going to go from the beginning of the string to that index I. And so this is a substring to that index I. So I plus one. So this is the substring from index zero to index I. And this is a string right now, but we want to convert it into an integer. So let's do that. And let's assign this to value. So we have our first value. And remember, there's no restrictions on what the first value can be, but for every value that comes after it, it needs to be exactly one less than it. It needs to be in descending order by one. And so this is the part where we're going to do our recursive backtracking. I'm going to call the recursive function DFS for depth for search just because it's shorter. I prefer that. And so if the if our DFS, if our backtracking returns true, meaning we could split the string, then what we're going to do is ultimately return true through the entire function. But if we never end up splitting the string properly, then after the loop executes, we're going to end up returning false. But now it's time to actually fill in this DFS function. I'm going to define it up above over here. So we only have to pass in two parameters, the index that we're starting at. So for example, see the value. If we, if the first value was simply just, just contained the first index of the string, then the next index can be zero plus one, right? It can be the remainder of the string except the first character. So that's what we're going to pass in here. So we're bringing up, so for our first parameter, we're going to pass in I plus one one we also need a second parameter to determine what the previous integer was right what our previous value was so that we can make sure it's in descending order by exactly one so the other parameter i'm going to pass into this dfs is going to be the value that we just calculated now the base case is going to be if our index is out of bounds meaning our index reached the end of the string so if it's at position length of the string in that case we can return true because there's no more characters left 
But you can see that this base case is never going to evaluate from this function call because we're never we're not actually iterating through the end of the string. I is never going to actually be at the end of the string because see we do have that minus one over here. But now let's actually get into the uh, main part of this algorithm. It's going to be at the depth first search backtracking is actually going to going to be pretty similar to this uh, portion that we wrote with just one small difference. So we're going to. So we're going to iterate through the remainder of the string from the starting of index to the end of the string this time. We don't have a minus one here because we can actually go to the end of the string this time because remember, we only have to split this into at least two separate values. And once again, what we're going to do is simply get that substring. So in this case, we're going to start at index and then go to J plus one. And we're going to convert this again into an integer and then assign it to val. Now again, we're gonna do basically the exact same thing that we did down here, but with only one difference. In this case, remember, this is not the first value that we're computing, right? With the first value that we got, there were no restrictions. But in this case, there is a restriction. This value that we just calculated has to be exactly one value less than the previous value that we calculated. So we have to determine, we have to verify that val plus one is exactly equal to the previous value. And if this is true, only then can we call our depth for search function. In Python, the way this works is if this evaluates the true, then the second portion of the and condition is actually going to execute. So this is not going to execute if this were false. So that's kind of what keeps our function pretty efficient, right? We're kind of pruning here. So this is not going to be super inefficient, even though it's backtracking. So the first parameter is going to be the starting index. So we ended at J in this case. So we're going to pass in J plus one. And for the value, we're just going to pass in the value. And so if both of these were true, that means that we were able to split our function. In that case, we can return true. And similar to down here, if this entire loop executes, but we never end up returning true, that means we were not able to split the string. In that case, we can just return false. And this is actually the entire code. You guys, if you're a regular viewer of mine, you know that this is basically how I solve all my backtracking problems. I basically follow this formula. We have a nested function, usually depth first search, inside of our root function. And then, you know, that's just kind of the standard way that we solve it. And then we just brute force through it. So I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. And I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.